What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. We are leaning on Jesus, Christ my Savior, safe and secure from all alarm. We are leaning on Jesus, Christ my Savior, leaning on the everlasting arm. All right, we are we are uh, talking about uh, uh, preparing for Pentecost. Preparing for Pentecost. Pentecost uh, comes uh, that there's, is a is a word that signifies fifty. And it is 50 days uh, after the feast of the Passover. Praise the Lord. Amen. There were three times of the year that Israelites were supposed to appear before God in festival. And that was the Passover, uh, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Praise the Lord. These were the major, some, the major feast of Israel. And so... Uh, and so, uh, after Jesus' uh, death, burial, and resurrection, who was the true lamb, and now if you remember, and I said this before, I, uh, as I had gotten started before, if you can remember uh, that in the original Passover, uh, the Lord had told the people to get a lamb and, 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 and sacrifice it, take its blood, and dab it on the top post, side post of their houses, and not come out of the house during that night when the Lord was going to release the death angel that was going to go throughout the land and kill the firstborn of men and animals. Praise the Lord. And so uh, they did that, and the, the, the death angel passed over Israel. And that's why it's called the Feast of the Passover. And so now... Uh, that the 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 actual revelation of it. See, and this is what I had said before. And you didn't catch it. You, you didn't hear me. Um, the the all those feasts that were established through through Moses and the, the people of Israel, uh, the people no doubt thought that they were just celebrating harvest times and and gathering times and all of this. But there was a deeper significance. Because God had told them to do this for a reason. And all those feasts, amen, were, were types and shadows and figurate, figuratives of the divine plan of salvation that God was going to bring upon the world. Praise the Lord. And so that's why uh, there in the book of John, where uh, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that take us away the sins of the world because Jesus Christ was the true lamb of God, amen. And he was crucified. His blood was shed during the, the Passover celebration. His blood was shed, amen. And then three days later, he rose again from the dead with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. And, and then after that resurrection, amen, uh, they, uh, the, according to the Jewish law and the Jewish feast days, they were to count seven weeks and a day after the after the Passover for the feast of the of Pentecost. All right, and that's why we're, we're we are talking about uh, what we're talking about now is preparing preparing for Pentecost. All right, yeah, we're preparing for it. And so what happened is that while after Jesus rose again from the dead. The Bible tells us that they, he, would, he spent 40 days personally appearing to his disciples. What was he doing? He was getting his disciples together. He was gathering together. Just, just as the, the Jews gathered the wheat, were gathering the barley and the wheat during that time period between the, Pass between the Passover and the actual Pentecostal feast, they were, they were waiting for the the, 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 the wheat harvest to come to maturity. They were waiting, they were waiting. And so they were waiting also uh, for the next thing to happen was, was going to be Pentecost. So Jesus appeared to them 40 days. 
and, and praise God. He led them out, amen, uh, as far as Bethany, and he was uh, raised, he, he, was, uh, he ascended into heaven, but before he ascended, he told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait there uh, until they be endued with power from on high. And so after the, the, he ascended into heaven, and the angels him appeared and says, where are you guys standing around here for gazing into heaven? That same Jesus that you saw go away into heaven, he's going to come back in like manner. Amen. Just as he said he would. And so they left Bethany and he went back to Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us over the book of Acts that they were there for 10 days and 10 nights. Remember now, he appeared to them for 40 days. So that left a 10 day gap. He, Jesus ascended, amen, on the on that uh, 40th day, amen, but they went back to Jerusalem and waited for another 10 days. And the Bible says is that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, amen, there appeared in the cloven tongue like as a fire, amen, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, filled all the, the house where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. That was the birthday of the church. Amen. The disciples could not go into all the world until they had been endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. They could not go forward in ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. They would not be able, amen, to bear up under Amen. The barrage of, 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 of persecution and opposition if they did not have the Holy Ghost. They would not be authorized to speak and represent Jesus through signs and wonders and miracles without the power of the Holy Ghost. They could not continue the ministry of Jesus Christ without the power of the Holy Ghost. And so it was necessary for them to go to Pentecost. Amen. And so that's our that's our history. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so now, praise the Lord, uh, that day in Palestine, amen, over 2,000 years ago, amen or so, AD 33, the, when, the, when, when, uh, when the Holy Ghost fell, that has happened and passed off into history. We are in a Pentecostal time period now. Amen. We are in a Pentecostal time period or the church age. This is also called the grace age. Praise God. Amen. If, though, if there are those of you that have studied the feast of Israel, you'll know that when uh, in the feast of the Pentecost, everyone was supposed to bring from their house, amen, two loaves of, of bread. Amen. And those two loaves of bread were to be made with leaven. Now, to those of you that, that know this and have studied, you know that leaven is a type of sin, okay? And there were some feasts where, uh, especially in the feast of, of the Passover, where there could not be found leaven even in their houses. That was the Passover. But for the feast of Pentecost, amen, they were to bring, amen, uh, uh, two loaves from their houses, Praise God. And those loaves of bread were, ma were made with leaven. Now, that was revelatory, brothers and sisters, because the two loaves represents the two type of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. Praise God. Being brought together before the Lord. And their people were supposed to wave that before God. But you, got, but you might ask the question, how in the world... Would God accept an offering, amen, that's got leaven in it or sin in it? That was indicating, brothers and sisters, amen, that though we are in the Pentecostal time frame now, amen, we ain't perfect. We are being perfected, praise God, amen. And we are only acceptable in the eyes of God when he looks at us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, I'm being perfected. You're being perfected. Amen. You haven't arrived yet. Praise God. Amen. You're being perfected. Praise God. It is our responsibility. Amen. It is our responsibility to live soberly and righteously and godly right down here in this present evil world. But in our best state, we all possess a propensity for sin. That's why the Bible tells us over in Romans that we are to reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. 
Amen. That's how we consider ourselves because we have we consider ourselves to have died to sin. We don't practice sin, but because we have a propensity, we still have that wretchedness about us. Have you ever been down on your knees praying and a nasty thought came to your head? Have you ever said the wrong thing? Have you ever thought the wrong thing? Have you ever done the wrong thing since you've been saved? Praise God. Since you've had the Holy Ghost, that means you are still being perfected. You still got some undoneness in you. Praise God. And God knows it. But that's the reason why Jesus Christ arose from the dead and he is in intercession mode and crying out for the forgiveness of his people. You and I. Amen. And we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. That's the only way we're going to make it. Amen. Now, I want I want to say this before I move on that some bible teachers mistakenly have the have people convinced amen that they have to uh, that they don't, they don't have to withhold themselves from committing sin that they, they that they might as well commit adultery they might as well be commit fornication they might as well smoke dope they might as well get drunk get high they might as well lie because it's in them no we are to live to live so really righteously and godly in this present world read 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 Titus 2 and 11 amen the bible will teach you if you read it praise god and so uh getting back to pentecost in preparing for Pentecost, amen, we want to celebrate Pentecost now that the real Pentecost has already happened. We are we are just commemorating this thing. We're just celebrating this thing, amen, and thanking God for the gift of the Holy Ghost, which gives us power to say no to our flesh. Praise be to God, amen. And so, amen. And so we are preparing, we're preparing, we are preparing for Pentecost, praise the Lord, all right? And so, on my first slide, uh, I want to uh, just make mention here, uh, okay, it wants to uh, mess with me again, all right? Okay, okay, uh, let's see, when we want to do picture in picture. Okay, it uh, kind of messed with me. Here we go. Here we go. Um, all right. Put me up in the corner. Put me in the corner. I'm not going to hide. Hallelujah. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, so the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost of God and the Holy Spirit is for you. Sometimes uh, the Holy Ghost is called the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Old Testament, it was called the Holy Spirit. Same spirit. <clears throat> And this Holy Spirit is for you. Now, I'm kind of taking up where I left off of last week, praise the Lord. And to, and to just to inform you, amen, that uh, uh, God spoke through the Old Testament prophets about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. He was, he was given revelation uh, about the coming and the necessity of the Holy Spirit. I want to look at some verses that, that prophesied and spoke of the coming of of the Holy Ghost. One verse there is in uh, Numbers chapter 11, and the text here says, and this verse 27 through 29, it says, and there ran a young man and told Moses and said, El dad and me dad, do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, my Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them? That was Moses' prayer. But we need to go back, amen, and look at the context of that statement to understand uh, what was going on that, that precipitated this, whole, this uh, Holy Spirit uh, occasion that happened, amen, to Israel back during the time and ministry of Moses. All right. The context of Numbers chapter 11, verse 27 reveals, and there's, and I'm focusing on that part of the verse that, that where Moses prayed, would God that all 
the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. That was Moses' prayer. Amen. Now, there was a reason for that, which we'll get into very shortly here. But when we study this context, there's two things that I'm trying to bring out here. One is man's desperate need of the Holy Ghost in order to please God. And another point that's being established here is the necessity of the Holy Ghost for ministry. All right, and so to understand all that, we got to go back, amen, to the book of uh, um, the book of, of Numbers, praise the Lord, amen. And we might as well turn there uh, to Numbers, praise the Lord, uh, chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. All right, let's let's go there real quick. Okay. Now the caption. This is the new uh, King James version. Uh, that that caption is not in the uh, in the King James version, but it's it's helpful. Okay. It says now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place uh, Tabira because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Amen. Now here's another one in verse number four. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. I think the Bible in the King James Version said they lusted. So the children of Israel also wept again. Now get it now. It says again, because it was complaining and crying and moaning in the first verse, here they are again. After they after the fire them burnt some of them, here they are again in the fourth verse here, and it says that they wept again and said, "Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers and melons, the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up." There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Get, get, get this. Get, get, get how they are denigrating a miracle from God. Woo, hallelujah. God didn't have to do that, but he did. But these ungrateful creatures, amen, are loathing this miracle that God had performed for them. Now, uh, now, I want to go back to my uh, slide here because I'm making a point. Without the leading and guidance of the Holy Ghost, men will displease God. And we're, we see that in verses 1 and 4 of the context. We're talking, we're talking about getting ready for Pentecost now and, and the necessity, the, 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 the absolute uh, necessity of the Holy Ghost, praise God. And we get that prefigured even in the Old Testament because God began to give, amen, revelation about uh, about the Holy Ghost even in the Old Testament, all right? And the slides, without the leading and guidance of the Holy Ghost, men will displease God. And one, number one, men will murmur and complain. And you see you see that the murmuring and the complaining made God angry. All right? Yeah, it made God angry. Now, there's some verses here that I want to give attention to, amen, because it talks about this. You want to say, why in the world? I mean, what murmuring and complaining? Everybody going to murmur and complain. Well, no. Uh, God, if, when God does something for you, 
You ought to stop crying like you ain't got no bread up under your arm. Amen. You really crying and, and moaning and groaning. You got a loaf of bread under your arm. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You got a loaf of bread under your arm. Stop with all that crumb, all that. God, you got God with you. You've got the creator on your side. And here you are complaining and murmuring. How dare you, amen, uh, relegate God himself to, to uselessness and permit yourself, amen, to murmur and complain. Murmuring and complaining does not please God, y'all. They murmured and complained, all right, because they did not have the power of the Holy Ghost to help them. Look at what it says over in Psalms. Let me get it up here. Psalms, uh, chapter 106, and verse number 24 through uh, 26. All right? Let's put that on the screen here. It says in their reference, Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his word but complained in their tents and did not heed the voice of the Lord. Therefore, he raised his hand in an oath against them to overthrow them in the wilderness. Lord, have mercy. You see what will happen when you start displeasing God? You see what will happen? Amen. There's another verse over in 1 Corinthians. Let's turn there. First Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse 8. Let's go there. Okay, we have some issues here. All right, hold on. Just give me a minute here. We'll get there. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, in the New Testament, that New Testament reference tells us we ought not act like them people where they murmured and complained. Okay. We're not supposed to be acting like them. All right. Uh, let me see. Maybe I should back up a little bit. All right. In verse 6, see that on your screen? He said, Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. Come on now. Come on, y'all. Uh, some of you folk that think that you can still uh, commit adultery and stuff and still, be, and still be pleasing in the sight of God. We're not supposed to do that. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Then verse 10 says, we're not supposed to complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happen to them as examples, and they were smitten for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Praise God. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, amen. We're not supposed to be murmuring and complaining. Amen. It displeased us. you got the God of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, who is on your side and you're going to allow your eyes to be shifted from his awesomeness, amen, to some temporary inconvenience and start murmuring and complaining. 
Ah, and now don't pass, don't, please don't give yourself an excuse. Amen. There is no, there is nothing in this world that's more valuable than your relationship with God. Nothing, nothing. All right. And so, and so without the Holy Ghost, now their problem was that this, as, as Moses uh, had to intercede for them, and that's going to happen a little later on in this text, that, that uh, these folk, they need, they need help. They need help. They, they cannot please God. But there's a remedy. There's a remedy that God's going to send, send some of them. All right. Uh, here's, here's another point that I want to make. You see on the on your screen there. It says, men will be consumed by their lusts. Without the Holy Ghost, you will be consumed by your own your own desires, your own passions. You'll be consumed with them. Yes, they will get, they will take uh, center stage. They will take the priority, what you want, what you feel, what you are, your, your cravings, all right? They will take center stage and you'll forget about what God has said. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you have the power to tell your passions no. Amen. You reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Amen. Amen. We're not to live in sin any longer. Amen. But without the Holy Ghost, men will be consumed by their lust. Amen. This is being typified and played out in this gospel story that we are talking about right now. There's some, uh, there's some, there, there's some more reference verses here in that second point I'm making. Amen. In Psalms, let me get there. All right. Psalms 78, 18. All right. Let's go there. Psalms 78 and 18. Let's see what that says. It says there on the screen, and they tested God in their heart. Get that, get that, get that. See, that's where the cravings and the passions, amen, they germinate there in your heart. God knows what's going on in your heart. And see, but without the Holy Ghost, you can't even tell yourself no because your passions will consume you. They tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Now, that's that's the New King James Version. Amen. Uh, you might you might read a little differently, but it means the same thing. All right. They asked for the food of their fancy. Amen. They complained. They were testing God because they couldn't get what they wanted. I, I won't. I got to have me some. And some leeks and some garlic. I got to have, I got to, I just got to, I just got to have me some melons. You know, you all know how that is. Some some folks, I got to have me some ribs. I got to, I just got to have me some chitlins. I, I just got to, I just got to. You ain't got to do nothing but die. Listen, they allow their passions to consume them. That cravings. That, that folks have. I got to have me a man. I got to go lay with a woman. I got, I, no, no, no. No. When these things are leading you to uh, 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 transgress the will and the word of God, you need the power to say no. All right? And so this text, read that in the Psalms. And they tested God in their heart. By asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? <laughs> Amen. As if God could, as if there's something that God can't do. Amen. God can, listen, God can keep you if you want to be kept, child. Hallelujah. But you need the Holy Ghost. That's why we are celebrating, amen, Pentecost, praise God, because, amen, it was uh, the giving, the sending of the power of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost enabled us, amen, empowered us to die to our sins and become alive unto God. 
There's another verse over in Ephesians chapter number two. Let's turn there. Ephesians two and verse two. All right. Men will be consumed by their lust. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. All right. Verse two says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter two, verse two. It says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now, now, Paul is addressing folks that have already come to Christ, already been born again, and he's, he's just reminding them where they came from, and he's going to tell them what they have, all right? So, and, and you and I, who have been born again, we're being reminded too, amen, that we used to walk according to the course of this world. Yes, we did. We did everything that everybody else was doing. Yes, we did. Amen. And, and, and I'm glad that the apostle is speaking here in the past tense because we don't walk this way now that we have been born again. Now that we have the Holy Ghost, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according, get the revelation here, according to the prince of the power of the oh, I might be making somebody mad right about here. Lord have mercy. Amen. That while you are not filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you are being consumed with your lust and you are under the dominating power of the prince of the power of the air. And if you, and if you don't know the name of that individual, let me tell you, it's Satan himself. Satan and his emissaries. Amen. He is manipulating you. Oh, my heart goes out to folk that don't have the Holy Ghost. You are being manipulated. You are being, you are being, the strings are being pulled like you're a marionette puppet on the stage by this devil that's using you and manipulating you and, and causing you to say and do all kinds of stuff. Amen. And, and, and even, even if he's not pulling your strings, your own evil lust, amen, are, are craving after stuff that you should not be having. Lord, have mercy. Amen. We used to walk like that. We used to be puppets and victims of the devil. We used to be, all right? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who are the sons of disobedience? Individuals who have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, God, God, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to preach this gospel to the lost folk. They're walking in disobedience. They're, they have been commanded by God to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Get, get water baptized. Amen. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God, let God walk in you. Glory be to God. It says, going on, among whom also, he, he's, he's reflecting back on us now, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature Children of wrath, just as others. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. You see, I'm going through all this to let you know, amen, that the problem that the Israelites had was that they did not have the spirit. And so they murmured. And they made God angry. And brothers and sisters, without the Holy Ghost, you're going to make God angry. Especially after he has sent a remedy for your sin, Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died for your sins, rose again from the dead, is alive forevermore, and wants to be your constant companion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, amen. When we read this text, amen, Ephesians, we remember how, th how things were. And, and if you can't tell the difference now that you're supposed to be born again, if you can't tell the difference in your life now as opposed to what you were before your so-called born again experience, amen, then you ain't changed. Amen. You need, you need the real power of the Holy Ghost. You need him. You need him. All right. And so, and so we reflect back, reflect back. Amen. Paul is causing us to look back over what the condition that we used to be in. But oh, here comes verse number four. Come on now. Here comes verse number four. But God, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody out there that's got a but God in your life? Hallelujah. God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, uh, made us alive together with Christ. Hallelujah. By grace, you have, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, brothers and sisters. Amen. God has done some wonderful things for us. Hallelujah. He has done some wonderful things through the Holy Ghost. That's why uh, we're celebrating Pentecost. Amen. We're going to celebrate. We're going to give God the praise, honor, and the glory for how God picked us up from where we were, hallelujah, and brought us into the kingdom of God. How God changed our mind. Many of us were our own worst enemy. We brought upon ourselves all kind of havoc all kind of destruction, all kind of bad relationships, all kind of bad decisions. We brought it all on ourselves because we didn't have no power. We didn't know what to do. Amen. Whatever we felt like, that's what we did. And it always got us into trouble. But oh, but God, but God, but God, merciful God showed up in our life one day and we were born again. We were buried with him by baptism and rose up to walk in the newness of life filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and having power over our flesh. Glory be to God. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, God's got something for you. Amen. We, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate this, this, uh, this, this Pentecost Sunday. We're going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Because we're going to remember from whence the Lord has brought us. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give God some praise out there. Hallelujah. I see the hearts going up. I see them. Hallelujah. Give them some more praise out there. Somebody give me a hallelujah. God bless you, Brother Lonnie. Hallelujah. Lord, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Reynolds, God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. All right. Oh, back, back to my slide. Back to my slide. Praise God. Men, the reason why we need the Holy Ghost. Without the leading and the guidance of the Holy Ghost, men will displease God. Men will become subject to ingratitude. And that's, that's, that's over in Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11 and verse number 6. Let's turn there real quick. Amen. It says there. But now, and again, we're going, we're, now we're back in the Old Testament and we're looking at the plight of these, these poor folk that don't have no power. They don't believe God. And they're complaining. And they're full of ingratitude. Look at, but now our whole being is dried up. And that's an exaggeration. Because God gave them manna from on, from on high. Ah, and they, they, they didn't uh, let their lust consume them to dishonor, disrespect, and become ungrateful for the miraculous supply of bread out there in the middle of the wilderness. But now our whole being is dried up. Look at them exaggerating. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. We want some more before our eyes. Who do you think you are to make demands on God? 
God sent you a miracle and you can't be grateful for that? Brothers and sisters, we need, we need to check ourselves when we get into or are tempted to get into a complaining mode. We complain when somebody didn't do for us, when somebody didn't give us, when somebody don't like us. When so, so, and listen, ain't nobody bigger than the God of heaven that walks with you, that talks with you, that lives with you. And you'll get your eyes off of him and let some puny little human consume your whole vision. The devil is a liar. Come on. Come on. Let's grow up, children of God. Let's grow up and let God teach us. Let's appreciate the God that we serve. Let's appreciate him for who he is. Some of our problem is many of us don't read the book and we are not constantly refreshed and rehearsed over the greatness of this God that we serve. We're not impressed. My God, when you get up every morning, you ought to be impressed that God gave you life. Impressed that you got that you're yet in your right mind. Don't you know that it was oh, it is God that is keeping you? Yeah, you might. I got some things I want I need God to do in my life, in my body. Oh, there's a this is stuff I want him to do. But brothers and sisters, none of that stuff, amen, has got my attention to the place where I've got to complain. Amen. That I ain't got no help at all. The devil is a liar. God is my constant help. God is with me at all times. Oh, brothers and sisters, come on, come on, come on. All right, we need we need to uh, need to get back to get back to praising God. Get back to loving the Lord. Get back to reading our Bibles. Get back to believing our God. Get back to worshiping, exalting him. Amen. You have not grown beyond worshiping God. Amen. Uh, when he taught you how to pray, he taught you, amen, to give him glory. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, even as it is in heaven. Ex lift him up. Exalt him. Our whole lives should be dedicated to exalting the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, amen. But time's running out here. Time running out here. Amen. We need we need to uh check ourselves, amen, and remind us of what God has done for us with through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. God is preparing us for Pentecost. We're being prepared for Pentecost, brothers and sisters. Amen. We're being prepared for Pentecost. And God wants us to remember where we come from, remember what he's done for us, and remember what he has for us now that we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise be to God. God bless you. Amen. On the screen there as you see it, amen, the banner for giving. I hope that you've enjoyed this Bible class and been reminded it's there right now. The three methods of giving, Givelify, Cash App, amen, and Zelle is all right there. Amen. You can give. Amen. We, we pray that you will support this ministry with your giving and be faithful. Amen. Your giving. Praise the Lord, because we're still fighting the adversary and we're still on the battlefield for our Lord. And yes, you can help us. You can help us to get this building built. Praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed to, to let you to to let to to accept whatever gifts you want to give. Amen. Because we got a vision and we are on the way. Praise God. So help us out. Help us out, if you will. Help us out, amen, by contributing to this ministry in Jesus' name. All right, we're going to end this Bible class, but we're going to just remind you of the various services that we have available. On Sunday, we're worshiping over at El Bethel Apostolic Church uh, in our in-person service on Sunday, amen, at 12 noon. The address there is 2316 Taney Place in Gary, Indiana. Meet us there in Jesus' name. And then on Monday, we have our prayer call, amen, at 6 p.m., praise God. There's a number on the screen there, amen. Take note of that and the code so that you can join in and be involved in an anointed prayer session, praise God. And then on Wednesday, praise God, every Wednesday, it is the Lord, 
Lord permits us to do a Bible study. Amen. We've been on preparing for Pentecost. Amen. So we're going to keep on preparing until uh, Pentecost comes. Praise the Lord. At 6 p.m. every Wednesday. And then on Friday, amen, the Sunday school lesson is being taught, amen, by our superintendent and his staff there, amen. And the team lesson is every first Friday of the month. Amen. And of course, and of course all these services, amen, are live streamed on Facebook. I want to invite you to be a part of our services. Amen. Uh, if you if you, if you um, don't, uh, if you want to call, amen, I believe that was, I uh, see was the number on the screen there. Yeah, the number's on the screen there. 883-8831 uh, down the bottom of the screen there. Amen. Give us a call. Amen. If you want to, want to uh, talk with me, amen, we, we can set up an appointment. Amen. And a and, uh, time we'll meet uh, and then we'll discuss whatever you discuss. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and so forth and so on. God bless you. We're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless uh, his people and give grace. Amen. To those, amen, who don't know him, that they might come to know him. Amen. And the beauty of the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we thank you and praise you for our time, my Lord, in the word of God. Thank you, my Lord, for this moment, Lord Jesus, of enunciating your, your goodness and your mercies toward us. Oh, thank you for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercies towards us. My God, I pray that you help those who have heard us tonight. If there be any out there, my Lord, who don't know you in the beauty of salvation, I pray, oh God, that you help them to come to a revelation of you that will cause them to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost according to the word of God. Bless, mighty God, in a special way. Bless and heal and deliver, we pray. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters and my friends. Hope to, amen, to be the minister to you again next Wednesday. Amen. We would look to be on live stream on Friday and live stream back on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Hope to, hope to meet you there again on Facebook live stream. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of the week. Amen.